In this video we look at the FP3 work about calculation of arc length and surface area. We need to be able to work out the arc length of a curve or the curved surface area of a solid of revolution for curves that are given either in Cartesian form or in parametric form. So for arc length, for a curve given in Cartesian coordinates, we have the arc length is given by the integral of the square root of 1 plus dy by dx squared. And if we have a curve given parametrically, then the arc length is given by the integral of the square root of dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared. For a, given, for a curve y equals f of x, which is rotated around the x-axis by 360 degrees, the resulting um, body has a surface area given by the integral of 2 pi y times the square root of 1 plus dy by dx squared. If the curve equation is given parametrically, then the result for the area becomes the integral of 2 pi y times by the square root of dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared. The formulae for arc lengths and surface areas are given in the formula booklet. Make sure you know where to find them. So let's now have a look at a couple of examples. So the first one comes from the 2012 paper and we're considering the, to begin with, we're considering the length of the curve y equals 2 minus cosh x which lies above the x-axis. So the first job is to find out what the start and finish points on the curve are. In other words, to find out where y equals naught, which is where cosh x equals 2. So we've got x is cosh to the minus 1 of 2 here and minus cosh to the minus 1 of 2 here. To find the length of the curve we need to do the arc length formula. So we have the curve equation is y equals 2 minus cosh x dy by dx is minus shine x. So the square root of 1 plus dy by dx squared is the square root of 1 plus shine squared x. 1 plus shine squared x is cosh squared x. So we've got the square root of cosh squared x, which is cosh x. So the arc length is the integral between minus cosh to the minus 1 of 2 and cosh to the minus 1 of 2 of cosh x. Integrating cosh x gives us shine x. And when we put the limits in, using a calculator, we will get the value 3.46 for the arc length. Moving on to part B. Well, we know the formula for the surface area is 2 pi times the integral of y root of 1 plus dy by dx squared. We already know that the root of 1 plus dy by dx squared for this curve is cosh x. So we have the surface area is 2 pi times by the integral between minus cosh to the minus 1 of 2 and cosh to the minus 1 of 2 of 2 minus cosh x, that's my y, times by cosh x, which is my root of 1 plus dy by dx squared term. If we multiply out the brackets inside the integral and split the integral into two terms, we've got the integral of cosh x. So we've got the integral of 2 cosh x, pull the 2 out, that gives me 4 pi times the integral of cosh x. And then we've got take away 2 pi times the integral of cosh squared x. The first one. We know the integral of cosh x is shine x, so we can handle that first integral very easily. 
the second integral we've got to integrate cos squared x and whilst that isn't difficult it isn't something we can immediately write down so on one side it is worth going through a process something like this there are alternative methods available but this is the way I'd probably do the integral of cos squared x simply remember that cos x is e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 so cos squared x is that squared multiply the top out multiply the bottom out I get e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the minus 2x over 4 which is the same thing as a half of e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x over 2 plus 1 the 1 there coming from the 2 over 4 which is a half but I've taken the half outside so we've got cos squared x is the same thing as a half of cos 2x plus a half so that means cos, the integral of cos squared x must be the same thing as the integral of a half cos 2x plus a half which is a quarter shine 2x plus a half x there are other ways of tackling that make sure you've got one way of confidently tackling the integral of cos squared x or indeed the integral of shine squared x so returning to where we were we can now put in that the integral of cos squared x is a quarter shine 2x plus a half x and if we now put the limits into those expressions we end up with a final answer of 13.5 correct to three significant figures now the mark scheme for this question for part A we needed for, for the first mark to find the limits of the curve so in other words the places where y equals naught so to realize that the limits were cos to the minus 1 of 2 and minus cos to the minus 1 of 2 we needed to find dy by dx and then work out that the square root of 1 plus dy by dx all squared came down to cos x which gave us a, another two marks and then using that inside the formula for arc length gave us another two marks and evaluating that integral correctly gave us the final two marks so that was seven marks altogether for the first part of the question for the second part of the question we had two marks for getting ourselves down to that expression for the surface area splitting it then sensibly gave us a method mark another mark we then had the job of working out the integral of cos squared x for a mark writing down the integral of the cos x another mark and then two final marks for finding the correct final value for the integral it's worth just noting that one could give exact answers for the arc length and the surface area if we're going to you make if we're going to find exact answers we're going to need to find um, alpha as cos to the minus 1 of 2 and give that in its logarithmic form we're going to need to find the value of shine alpha which can be relatively easily done from the fact that we know that cos alpha is 2 and using the relationship that cos squared alpha minus shine squared alpha is always equal to 1 so we can find the value of shine alpha we can find the value of shine 2 alpha by using the fact that shine 2 alpha is 2 shine alpha cos alpha so th those results will enable us to get an exact answer for the arc length of the curve and also an exact answer for the surface area of the curve as a general rule I wouldn't do that unless the ex question asked me for exact answers
Moving on to a second example from the 2008 paper, we have got a curve which is given parametrically. First part of the question just asks me to work out what the square root of dx by d theta squared plus dy by d theta squared is. And then second part of the question, we're going to use that result to find the arc length and the surface area of the curve. So, we need to find dx by d theta, which is an application of the chain rule for differentiation. Similarly, we need to find the um, an expression for dy by d theta, which again is a chain rule application. So dx by d theta squared plus dy by d theta squared is going to be 9 sine squared theta cos to the 4 theta plus 9 cos squared theta sine to the 4 theta. Got a common factor of 9 sine squared theta cos squared theta times by cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. But cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1. So we can say that that's 9 sine squared theta cos squared theta. Now, remembering that theta lies between naught and pi by two, when we take this, we know that this, um, sine theta is positive and cos theta is positive in those values. So we are quite safe in saying then that the square root of dx by d theta squared plus dy by d theta squared is three sine theta cos theta. That's the same thing as three over two times two sine theta cos theta which is exactly 3 over 2 sine 2 theta. So we've done the first part of the question. If we move on to the second part of the question now, we've got to find, first of all, the arc length of C. Well, we know the arc length is the, square, is the integral of the square root of dx by d theta squared plus dy by d theta squared. So in this case, that's the integral between naught and pi by 2 of 3 over 2 sine 2 theta. 3 over 2 sine 2 theta integrates to minus 3 over 4 cos 2 theta between naught and pi by 2. When theta is pi by 2, 2 theta is pi, so cos pi is minus 1, so we get 3 quarters. And when theta is naught, 2 theta is naught, cos of naught is 1, so we get minus, so we've got overall 3 quarters minus minus 3 quarters, which is 3 over 2. Moving on to the surface area part of the question, we know that the surface area is the integral of 2 pi y times the root of dx by d theta squared plus dy by d theta squared. So in this case, that gives me 2 pi. And then we've got the integral between naught and pi by 2 of sine cubed theta times by 3 over 2 sine 2 theta d theta. Sine 2 theta we know is 2 sine theta cos theta. So that's 2 pi times the integral of 3 sine theta to the power 4 cos theta, or in other words, 6 pi times the integral of sine to the 4 theta cos theta. Evaluating this integral is relatively straightforward if we just use the substitution u equals sine theta. So with u equals sine theta, we've got du by d theta equals cos theta. So du is the same thing as cos theta d theta. So cos theta d theta term will become my du. Sine theta to the power 4 is just u to the power 4. When theta is naught, u is naught. And when theta is pi by 2, we've got u is 1. So the substitution tells me that a is going to be 6 pi the integral between naught and 1 of u to the 4 du, which integrates quickly to 1 fifth u to the 5. So we end up with 6 pi 
times by 1 fifth, take away 0. So that's 6 pi over 5 for our final answer. The marking on this question. Well, first of all, we had method mark and answer mark for using the chain rule to find dx by d theta and dy by d theta. And then three marks for obtaining the given answer for the square root of dx by d theta squared plus dy by d theta squared. Finding the arc length of c was worth four marks. Two marks for obtaining the correct integral to be evaluated and two marks for then evaluating it and obtaining the answer 3 over 2. And then for the curved surface area, there were two marks for getting down to the given expression here, the given integral, and then three marks for going through the process of evaluating that integral.